the Lord is good and his masses endures forever. Hallelujah. I come on board as a mother and as a servant of God uh, wanting to address the generations of our young people. The generation of our young people. And as I do this, um, I would want to read a scripture that I've just had in the spirit that is not in my notes. Um, let me read for, for us this because um, a fruit will never fall far from the tree. A fruit will never fall far from the tree. So what are we supposed to do as parents? What are we supposed to do as parents? We must restore sanity and the God fear in our own houses and it has to begin with our own very lives if um i don't have the fear of god in me even if i try to mentor my children in that direction and it may be very very difficult because why i as i bring them up i become their role model i become their role model so if i am i'm, I'm sleeping around with men if i'm i'm fornicating around if i'm you know I, i'm doing all those things i'm drunkard now, even if I try to tell my children not to do it, they will have a question to ask because why? That is the kind of an impartation or an, or an impression I'm giving them that this is the way life is supposed to be. So the Bible says in the book of um, Psalm 112, uh, I love this portion of the scripture. The Bible says, let me let me read for us this. The Bible says, blessed is the man who fears the Lord. So it has parents out there even as we speak about this generation even as we speak because in this generation we are also there so this generation has not kept us aside we are also there we that's why we are alive so we are a part of this generation so the bible says blessed is a man who fears the lord who delights greatly in his commandment so as parents and uh, you know we must go back there we must have the fear of god in us and we must delight in the commandments of the lord and not one all of them the bible says he his descendants will be mighty on earth the generation of the upright will be blessed hallelujah so there is it is beginning with us that is why we have the verse one of that portion of the scriptures hallelujah so the fear of god has to begin with us it has to flow from us so that we can impact to the generations of our children and this is where the bible says that the, the generation of the upright will be blessed the bible says wealth and riches will be in his house and his righteousness endures forever the righteousness of the righteous man endures forever so we, we we must endeavor we must endeavor the bible says and to the upright the bible says and to the upright uh there, there arises right in the darkness you are you seeing this he is gracious and full of compassion and righteousness hallelujah you know you can lead all of it someone to have just had that in my spirit it was not in my notes so the beginning point the beginning point and this is why probably Proverbs chapter 22, can we go there? Just ahead there, Proverbs chapter 22. Uh, Proverbs chapter 22, just after Psalms, there's the proverb, the book of Proverbs chapter 22. I am there. The Bible says verse 6 and 9. Verse 6 and 9, from verse 6 to 9. The Bible says, train up a, tra train up a child. Now, we have made it a brother. We are dumping children in school. We have become too busy looking for money. You know, looking for money. It is good to look for money for the upkeep of the family. But then this training, a child has to begin with us, the parents. We have to get back on, a, on the track. Let us sit down with our children. Let us have time. Study the word of God with them. Teach them how to pray. Let them see you pray. Let them see you study the word of God. Sit down with them. And this is what we are seeing for the children of Israel, the nation of Israel. That, you know, remember that time Moses has even been told to tell them that, you know, the word of God should be mounted on their walls, you know, for their children to be able to read. Hallelujah. So train up a child in the way he should go. This is, uh, you know, even as we release our children to teachers and to schools out there, and uh, some of these institutions, the owners are not even worshippers of our God. As they interact out there, the foundation should begin from us. 
we should lay that foundation. And this is what we are seeing because of the kind of godly foundation people like Joseph, I mean Joseph, uh, had from their father's house. We see Joseph is able to start even when he is very far from his father's, you know, father's life. He is able to start from, you know, and and start his ground and say, I cannot do this. I cannot sin. And by the way, he did not say uh, to 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 fail, I mean to Potiphar's wife that I cannot sin against my father. No, he said I cannot sin against the Lord my God. That's why people like Daniel are able to make choices of uh, spiritual integrity without nobody overseeing them. Nobody is there. Hallelujah. So train up a child. Parents, we must now slot in this amidst our busy schedules. Pray with your children in the morning. Study the word of God. Have a fellowship in the evening. Whatever time God is going to enable you. Hallelujah. You know, let us teach them even as we release them to the world. Let them have the training from us. Let them know our morals. Let them know the commandments of our God. Let them know what we believe. Otherwise, if they, you'll set them out there, you know, with that, that vacuum whatever they'll get out there it will fill them up that's why you see uh, they are falling off uh, somebody introduces something to them and uh, somebody is making money and it is something easy they just go for it because why they have no they are not grounded they have no foundation of, of God hallelujah so the Bible says and when he is old he will not depart from it when a child is trained in the way of the Lord, hallelujah. The Bible says, train the child in the way, not ways, in the way of the Lord, or, or the way he should go, depending on the version of your Bible. The Bible says, and when he grows up, when he is old, he will not depart from it. Hallelujah. He will not depart from that way. Even I, I, I've been there and I've seen even the servants of God, you can agree with me out there. There are times, you know, our children you know, went off, but God restores them back. God reconciles them back because the Bible is very clear here. We have the backup of the word of God. When they grow up, when he grows up, when he is old, he will not depart from those ways. Even if you are born again and your children or your child have gone out of the track, continue holding on to the word of God. God will still restore back. I want us to have faith that God will still restore back. Hallelujah. So um, I'm, I'm talking about these children. I'm talking about the generation we are in, the generation, not the older people, but the generations of our children. We are in a generation of the fulfillment of Daniel chapter 12. So wickedness is increasing. So we are bringing up children in a season where wickedness is increasing. And not only wickedness is increasing, even knowledge is also increasing. We are in a season of, of AI, artificial intelligence intelligence hallelujah when we were growing up we did not know such kind of things some of us when we were growing up we did not have the mobile phones we do not have the internet hallelujah you know so we are in that generation where you know knowledge is increasing and as the knowledge is increasing wickedness is also increasing that is a fulfillment of the scriptures because of the times we are in but amidst all that the bible shows me um you know there is purification for god's people there is a i mean there is purification for god's people there is purging for them and there is refining for them. So on the other hand, as, as um, you know, wickedness and the knowledge is increasing, on the other hand, God is also doing something. And number two, I have always said, even as a I mean, as the knowledge is increasing under the sun, it is not only increasing to the wicked. We are seeing also, for us who are here as sons of God, knowledge is increasing. God will give us divine strategies to be able to handle this season with his wisdom and counsel in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. By the grace of God. And I want each one of us to know that the season we have entered into, magicians have no any power or authority. The wise men of old have no power or, or authority to be able to interpret the dreams of this hour. They cannot handle it. This one needs somebody who has walked right with the God, who has gone through the process of God, who has the wisdom, not I mean not the wisdom and the knowledge of this world, but the knowledge and the wisdom that is coming from heaven, that is heavenly. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So we are not going to relent. Ah, come on somebody. We are not going to relent. We shall sit down with our children and don't assume even a breastfeeding child cannot hear your voice. They will hear. I said the other day, even if you are pregnant and you are aspiring to be pregnant, can they begin, pre, pre, you know, begin speaking to the seed of your womb? They have ears. They will hear. Hallelujah. So we are going to train our children. We are going to train our children, you know, in the way 
that is good, the way they are supposed to live. So we shall impact them. We shall impact them. We shall impact with them. I mean, to them. We shall impact them, and we shall impact to them the morals and the standards of our kingdom. Because while we are a godly generation, I love what the psalmist is saying in Psalm 145 and verse 4 that one generation will declare the works of God to another generation. So we are the people who are releasing the right button to the next generation of our young people in the name of Jesus. We shall not allow the internet to teach them. We shall uh, we shall prayerfully, you know, counsel them, mentor them, and uh, speak to them and let them know, you know, the word of God is saying this, the internet is saying this, the Google is saying, is saying things, the AI is saying this, but then the word of God is saying this, and this is where we are grounded. This is where we are rooted. Let them know it as a family, this is where we are rooted. Speak it out, parents. Speak it out. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So we cannot just release children to teach us and release them out there. And we have not counseled them. We have not mentored them. We have not told them. Hallelujah. I have been there. My mother, I know at one point the, the, these children can, can say you are, you are out, you are outdated. You, you are not, a, this is a language I'm encountering, particularly in my nation. You know, you, you people are not in our generation. You don't know the struggles we are going through. Let me say nothing has changed. It's only the season that has changed. Nothing else as far as human being is concerned. Nothing has changed. You still have the same eyes we have. You still have the same women there. You know, we, we, are, we are having the same things. So you are able, if we are, we control our ourselves during our time even this time this body everything can control itself you know you a body can have order we can have the order of god because god has not changed the creator who created us has not changed the status of our god have not changed either in the name of jesus hallelujah so uh uh first john john uh, uh speaking to the young people let me show you what he's writing John is writing something here. First John chapter two. First John chapter two, uh, verse fourteen to verse twelve to verse fourteen. So John is writing to the young people, and this is what he's saying. He's saying, "I write to you, little children." Uh, another version. I love the other version uh, that talk about the young people. So let me read for you. I'm going to see. Uh, this is a spiritual state. This is how it is supposed to be. So he's writing to the little children because your sins are forgiven you for his namesake. So the little children. They have not seen that the sins are forgiven of them. Hallelujah. Now listen to this in verse 13. I write to you, fathers, because you have you, you have no uh, you have known him who is uh who is uh from the beginning. So fathers have known him. This one, the little children don't they, they don't have this knowledge, but fathers have this knowledge of him who is from the beginning. That is Jesus Christ. I write to you, young men. That is my concentration. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. That that means if you are struggling with something as a young person, you have the provision of overcoming the wickedness. That power and that strength is in you. You have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. It's like a song John is writing here because it's a repetition. I write to you, young men, because you are a strong. That is my concentration also. So he's writing to the young people because they are strong. And uh, the word of God abides in you you and you have overcome the wicked ones so how do you uh, how do you overcome as a young person as a young person we are seeing here you overcome the uh, number one the word of god is clarifying here you know about the strength of young people number two uh we must be able to abide our strength you know that thing that we have is not for so many other things but it should be able to lead us to abiding in the word of god abide in god you know abide in the word of god hallelujah you know the word of god that is supposed to abide in us we should also be able it is a true traffic abide in that word because why our strength is not for scatter our strength is not for immorality our strength is not for drug addiction our strength is not uh, to covenant our lives you know to uh you know secret movement now this I have encountered one too and somebody is saying mama we have said that we would rather live a short life and we live well somebody covenant and give I mean sells their souls to the devil and somebody is told by the age of 33 you know they sign agreement and covenant you know we're giving you the car the money and the fame and all those things but then you have sold your soul to the devil let me tell you after that after you have died after that because that is the devil who has killed the body after that the Bible says you know you should be more concerned about the 
one who is able to deal with the body and the soul. So the body, I mean the devil, where you have covenanted your soul, he is only dealing with your body, but your soul has an internal destination which you should be careful about. So let us, let the young people out there with that strength you have, with that strength you have. Now we have too many platforms of social media, too many platforms. And uh, and uh, can I say this to the young people? Can I say this? I'm not very old. <laughs> so can I say this to the young people? You know, we have been there. We have been there. And let me tell you, what you allow to influence you is what determines your destiny. You cannot live like any other person and you cannot copycat, you know, another person's life. And none, none of us was created as a copycat of the other. Each one of us is unique. So live your life as a young person. Live your life as a young person and live your life and uh, fulfill your purpose. Fulfill your purpose as a young person. Avoid being a copycat. And I've been telling the young people, some of these things you are seeing on social media, they are just, you know, for a show off. They are just for a show off. You know, some of these people you are following in instance, and the people you are following, you think somebody taking a photo at the airport and traveling every time. You think they are traveling all the time. Now, we have something that is even called Photoshop. Somebody is just, you know, somebody is on an assignment. Somebody is employed. You know, somebody is doing an assignment or somebody is being paid for whatever they are showing you somebody showing you is a man now they are lip staking they are making their hair now it, it seems now a man who has now turned to be a woman and they are making money and they are, they, are, they, are, they are living large they are driving this car i don't know what hallelujah you, you know showing you the kind of a life they had before and now after they have now a man now began living like a woman making their nails and their whatever whatever now you think that is not the life that is giving them money let me tell you some of these people are living a life they are living Living a lie, they are on business. They are, they are, they are, they are working for the for the kingdom of darkness. They are on, on employment, and they have been, you know, they have been employed to, to to influence as many young people as they can. So when you see these things, don't just believe in them. These are lies. These are lies. Three quarter of these things you are seeing out here, they are lies, and they are on an assignment. They are on a demonic agenda to mess up as many young people as they can. To, I mean, to win the souls and the hearts of young people, as many as young people as they can. And I want to speak to our young people out there. Let me tell you, you think uh, lesbianism and gayism is beginning now. Even in Sodom and Gomorrah, it was there. So there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, imagine in Sodom and Gomorrah, rot had virgin girls. Lord had virgin girls, you know, in that Sodom and Gomorrah, where men were sleeping with other men. You remember when they saw angels come into the house, uh, you know, of 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 of, 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 of uh, Roti. They want they were they they, they, they they were looking for them to sleep with them. That means gazing gazing was on a, on a very high level in Sodom and Gomorrah. But what do we see? Roti, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, Roti had virgin girls. Imagine he was able to bring up. Virgin girls in that land, in that land. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Hallelujah. So we, we must be very, very careful. You know, God has never lacked a remnant. I want to speak to young people out there. Sex, the, this sex and, uh, you know, the drinking you are doing and the sex and all of you. Let me tell you, according to the scriptures, can I open as a mother, open up to you as a mother who has children that are of, of some of your ages, you know, as a mother in the Lord who is dealing with young people around my life, hallelujah. Let me tell you, this sex you are running for, you know, using codom, using family planning pews and doing everything, sleeping with this woman and sleeping, uh, by the way, that, that, does, not, uh, that does not make you a, a hero. It does not make you a hero. It does not make you an influencer. It does not add anything to you. You are just wasting yourself away. You just wasting yourself away because why from the beginning god created one man for one woman one woman for one man and it is not two two women you know two women i even wonder young people can we speak these things how 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 can a woman sleep with another another woman how 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 do you how how is it are these things done that is wickedness how can you kiss another woman and have intimacy with another woman as a woman? How can you sleep with another man, man as another man? But when you read the, read the word of God in the book of Romans chapter 1 from verse 18, you see, you know, because of the kind of lifestyle people have decided to live, you know, God, in God, you know, the season, God will not come and hold our hands and hold our bodies and hold our everything. We have choices to make. So you see that season comes in where, we, I mean, uh, you know, human beings are going even the direction that a cow can not go even a dog cannot go that direction 
you have never seen a male dog sleeping with another male, male dog. It, it cannot happen. Even dogs, even cows, even lions, even grasshoppers. Hallelujah. So it is a pervasive and an adulterous generation. But in the midst of that, we have people who are in such kind of seasons and uh, they had such kind of opportunities and they made it as young people. So there's nothing unique about this. Don't tell them, you know, don't tell me your body took you there. You know, you know, my friends, I I'm going to read for you scriptures today. Kaitre, my friend, you have a destiny to live. And I want the young people to know when you have been put in a coffin and six feet under, you will appear before God alone. No friend will come and start with you. The people you're hanging out with there, drinking with them, them and doing all the things you are doing you will not start with anybody out there i was in high school many years ago you know and we had girls who i hotel they could even sneak out of the school and go and drink out there they were you know many times they were expelled from school and they came back and let me tell you it was not long enough immediately we finished from fourth two of them just died in those clubs and all that because why let me tell you your sins will always fight you out you are sins and i cried bitterly because I, we had preached those girls but they could not understand they could not see the sense by that time so I, I i mourned because i'm like these are souls lost and that's why the devil is is killing because it is the devil who is killing let me tell you according to the word of god there is an a, you know there is a specific age that you know we should live here on earth so why why, why would somebody and i know somebody is about to ask me what about Jesus who died at the age of 33? Let me tell you, Jesus finished his work and he was he was a son of God. He was here. He was here on an assignment. Jesus is God. He was here on an assignment. He And when he finished, because it was about our redemption, so the life of Jesus cannot be compared with ours, you know, his lifespan. Because he went back where he belonged. Hallelujah. He went back where he belonged so that he can, uh, he can, uh, he can be redeemed today. today. So that we can be found today, so that we can have eternal life. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So there is there is there is an age limit. There's an age limit according to the scriptures. So we we, we, we must come out of this. And I love what the Bible is saying in the book of Psalm uh, Psalm 91 and verse 16. With long life will God satisfy us. You know, with long life. Hallelujah. So I have been to I've been to a place called Rangata. Rangata is a cemetery. In, uh, in in the city of Nairobi, and you go look, reading those those um those crosses that are put in those tubes, and you see the ages. It is so scary. It is young people have been to a mortuary called City Mortuary, and and uh, you know you look at the ages, you know the 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 the, the age limits. You it is so scary. I have been in a ward in an, a hospital called Kenyatta Hospital. No, and you look at the that that the the, you know, the place where the HIV, you know, uh, people are kept. You look at the age limit; it is so scary. Very small children to an age of 12, 13, 14, and you're asking the person, "What happened to you?" You know, I was going to school, and I was going to school. My mom used to give me fare, but I had a relationship with a tout. I had a relationship with a driver, and that's why how I contracted. So why give your body before time and to a man who is not your husband? That is a sin, and you know, let me say, your sins will always fight you out. So we have so many young people. Another day, it is in the public domain, the statistics about the HIV positive, even in our universities and our colleges. It is too alarming. It is alarming. Parents, it is alarming. Imagine me as your mother. I have no HIV, but you have it. I gave you birth to you without it. Why are you getting it? Why? What are you looking for? What will happen to the generation of your children? So you are cutting off a generation. Why? What is it for? What is it for? You live on medication. What is it for? And, and nowadays I'm told there are things that have come. You can, uh, I don't know, you take some pills before that you fornicate so, so that, it, you know, it, you, can, um, you can avoid the contracting HIV. You know, so that is it, it just an encouraging wickedness. But let us know this body, it is God who created us. Young people out there, these bodies are temples of God. You don't mess up with them. If you, try, you, you go that direction, the owner of the temple is on your case. So we have the opportunity as young people. And uh, please avoid sex, avoid drunkenness, avoid drug addiction, avoid those secret movements. You're not, it, you drive the good car today and tomorrow. And uh, you know, I have had all the cases of young people who have sacrificed even their own parents. They have sacrificed their own brothers and their own people. Because uh, when they went to university and uh, you know they were introduced to those things, 
they'll introduce those things and somebody want to drive like other people they want to be flying out like other people then after that the bible is asking what shall it profit a man if you gain the whole world and you lose your own soul what shall it profit you nothing nothing so the, 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 the few years, about 70 or so, God has given you and me. Can we live right? Because there is eternity. There is life after this. Let nobody lie to you. That, you know, there, is no, there is no life after this. There is life after this. And we shall use even the social media platforms you are using to be distorted and to be messed up. We shall use all the platforms that God is giving us to tell you the truth. Because we have been there. We, we have been young. I was a teenager one day. My God, hallelujah. And I did not have a multiple of boyfriends. What are you telling us? What are you telling us? I cannot do without a boyfriend. What are you telling us? That you cannot do I, Mama, I cannot survive. How? I cannot survive with a boy, without a boyfriend. And somebody wants to lead us in prayers and worship. How? Or to lead us in prayers in the church. How? You know? That is a spirit of immorality. That, that, now, look at that. We have stories in the Bible. People like uh, Joseph and Mary, they were engaged for marriage. And I've always told the people in church, when you are engaged for marriage, that is not a legal ground for you to begin sleeping around and fornicating with your partner. Because we see the story of people like uh, even Isaac and Rebecca. We don't see the trial and error. What are you trying? What are you trying? We see people like, uh, you know, Mary and Joseph. Actually, Mary is saying she's, the man is already there, but I've not slept with him. I know no man. I know no man. So she's asking the age, well, how shall it be? I know no man. That means she had not slept with the Joseph, yet they were in a relationship for marriage. They were engaged in an engagement for marriage. So what are you telling me? You cannot start, you cannot start what? What are you telling us? What are you telling us? Can, can holiness and purity be restored back to the house of God? Can it be restored back to the house of God? Can it be restored back to the house of God? Hallelujah. So young people, you are strong. And in that strength, let abide, let the word of God, I know the Bible says, uh, uh, and the word of God abides you. Let the word of God abide you, abide in you. You have that capability. You have that responsibility. You have that ability. Hallelujah. Just the way we have taken you to school and you are able to even to master some things on TikTok and to master, I don't know what, on football. You will know the, all the characteristics. You, you can also master the word of God. You, the word of God, you can also allow the word of God to abide in you. Because it's the same space, the same space you are using to know all the characters in a football match, to know, I don't know what, in TikToks and who is doing what and following what. You, that energy, that strength, you can also allow the word of God to abide in you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And by that, we are going to be able to overcome the wicked one we shall be able to overcome the wicked now the wicked one without the knowledge and the counsel of the word of god the young men out there in this pervasive and out trust generation you will not make it the influence out here is another level the influence out here is another level hallelujah the influence out here is another level so the bible says um the Bible says, Proverbs 9 and verse 10, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So I'm requesting the young people out there, let us fear God. Let us fear God. It is a personal call. I remember when uh, my mother brought me to college in the city of Nairobi, I, I you know, uh, because of where we were and where I came from, I found myself living in one of the slums, one of the biggest slums in the city. It was not very rosy. And I'm telling you the immorality. Actually, people could do, they could fornicate doors wide open. You are passing and the door is wide open. And they, they are not even beds. People are sleeping on the floor. And they are doing it during the day. You are just passing and they are doing it during the day. And because now that's all my mother could afford that time. You know, and, uh, you know, my mother used to come and like, how do you live here? And she kept encouraging me and she told me, a righteous person, even if you are cooked in a pot that is full of sin, you will still come out, you know, still come out of that cooking. You know, a righteous person. It is a decision you make. Look at Joseph, a young person in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in Egypt. There was a provision and a very good opportunity, even for his promotion. But what do we see? He, when he stood his ground at the end of the day, we see God is now bringing his own promotion that is greater even for what the devil had, uh, had uh, you know, uh, had, uh, had uh, deparated for him. Hallelujah. So you, you start, and we made it. We came out of those places and we never fornicated. I am never ashamed even to come out openly like this. I never fornicated with a man in those places. I did not. I did not sleep with men there. Hallelujah. And I was in the church. I was in the school, college, and, uh, and the church, and, and uh, I, I, I you the leader. And, and we made it. It's a decision you made. 
you make. In, when we were growing up, I saw, you know, girls lie out there with the boys lie out there. We did not. Because why? You know, it's a decision you make. And that's why some of us are able to start strong today. It's a decision you make. It's a lifestyle you choose. My body, you know, women out there, young girls, keep your body pure for your husband. My God, it is so, it is, oh my God. You know, and it feels good when, when you are still a virgin at the age when everybody else has dieted. You, it, you're not a fool. It is a price for you. And you, let me tell you, even your own husband will respect you. The same case applies to young people out there. You know, it is so, it is, it, it is, it, it is such a, a, you know, a nice feeling when you have not given your body to a man or a woman who is not your husband. You wait until that day. It is so, so encouraging. And I want to decree on this altar because I'm seated in the house of God. I want to decree on this altar that in our generation, we shall have holy matrimonial from our children. My God, hallelujah. My, we shall have it. And even if you have fallen short of that glory, you know, you have fallen short because of where your interaction, let me tell you, restore yourself. But God is able to restore even the virginity. He's able to do that so that you can enjoy your marriage when that time comes. God is able to do that. So let us fear God. That is where the, that is the beginning of the wisdom in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So uh, let us, uh, the other thing I want to say to the young people, let us avoid the quick fixes. You know, we are in a generation of microwave. Pa, pa, and the button press here and here and these are just flowing and that because of that spirit of the internet that, that the same case now is applied to the mindset of our children people don't want to labor and that's why you see people can even buy certificate and people can buy they can bribe you know even to get uh, connections and employment and when you interact with them they have no knowledge of nothing they are not even able to deliver nothing people don't want to pay the price you realize even in the church you know, i'm so talking about the church in the quotes you know we have young we have men who have now diverted from the cause they are looking for women with the money so and actually nowadays we i'm seeing it even happen in the church where now young women are looking for all the men they are looking for 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 you know young men are looking for older women people who have money because they don't want to get tired you just want to go in a place where the car is there everything is there you know so you can just continue with the life you just continue with the life let me tell you my god it is good when you have built look at what is happening my god it was not served in a silver platter for joseph he's gathering seven years in egypt you know he's building something he's rebelling Look at what is happening to people like Gideon. Look at what is happening to people like Jephthah. He had an inheritance, but what do we see? But he's coming back. He's building. He's repairing. He's working. You have to. Uh -uh. Hallelujah. And this is what we are seeing to a, a, a young man we emulate, Jesus Christ. He, he, you know, he worked. He worked. He did not. He's not just given a name above any other name. He, he worked. He was working. And I have always said for the 18 years, from the age of 12 to the age of 30, where was Jesus? He was working with his father. The father was a carpenter. He was there. So be there, be, you know, and, and I pray that, um, you know, that, that God is also going to help the fathers, the father figures, because we are lacking father figures. We are lacking, you know, figures, you know, father figures, you know, where the young people can, can look unto. We are looking at, uh, we, we have very few father figures in our generation. Very few fathers, responsible fathers. I have been to parent meetings and you realize three quarter are women. Can I, can I, can I, uh, can I get this, you know, confirmation from somebody out there? It, you know, three quarter are women. Then you were like, my God, where are fathers? And anytime I went to a meeting, you know, to a meeting, a school meeting or a, a, a youth meeting, you know, somewhere, and I saw fathers, you know, even if it is one, I, I, I you know, I congratulated them. I made sure I greeted them just to congratulate them. I met so many women, hey, hey, fathers out there, seriously, who is bringing up the student for you? And some of you, even in the church, you just give birth with women there and you just dump. You just dump. I'm a woman of God and I know what I'm talking about. You know, somebody just gives birth with, you know, for, I mean, gives birth to children and they don't care. They, 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 they dump these ones, go and get married, another woman, dump children there. And you are in the church of Jesus. You are a wicked man. You are a wicked man. You are, and your life can never be fulfilled. You are a wicked man. Any man in the church, and you have children out there. Even if you got children before you are born again, those that is your blood. Go take care of your children. Let me tell you, you'll never be fulfilled in your life if you are covering up in the church and you have children out there. 
who you, you don't even take care of. Even if you married 10 times, if you have children out there and you're not taking care of them. Hallelujah. So the, the, the mothers have been left to, to, carry the, uh, to carry both the burdens of a mother and a father. You know, it, it's, it's not supposed, that's a disorder. That's a disorder. Fathers who are not even responsible, they cannot even educate their children. They cannot even feed their children. So what do you expect of, 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 of a boy child out here? What do you expect? What are we bringing up? So uh, can we, uh, um, hallelujah, we are going to handle it. By the grace of God, we are handling, we are handling the boy child here. We are going to handle it. We are going to mentor that. Because let me tell you, I now understand what the Bible says in the book of Timothy. You know, let me, let me get for you that scripture. You know, I'm getting for you this scripture because the faith that Timothy has, the father is not mentioned. It is the grandmother and the mother. Where was the father? <laughs> So before this boy is taken over by the Apostle Paul, you know, we see he's coming from a, you know, he's coming from a, from, from the faith he has. Is come, that is the 2nd Timothy chapter 1, 5 to 7. So the faith, that faith is coming from the grandmother and also to the mother. So it's a lineage of women who have, you know, who have the faith. Where was the father? The, because the father is not mentioned. Hallelujah. The father is not mentioned. Now, did you realize even... Um, uh, in the life of Jesus, we don't see like now what is happening in the in the in the wedding of Cana of Galilee. We don't see the father mentioned anywhere. It's Jesus it, then, and the Mary was there. So where was Joseph? Where was Joseph in the ministry of Jesus? Where was Joseph? What happened to Joseph? What happened to that man? What happened to him? So let let us be um, be very alert in our spirit and let us agree. Let us agree, fathers. I'm praying for fathers in my generation. Let us agree to be restored back to our position so that we can bring up, we can bring up a generation, you know, of, of sons, of sons of integrity, men who are so bad. This is what we are seeing because of the foundation Joseph had, you know, in his father's house. He knew what to do and what not to do, even when the father was not there. So who, when you have children and you, are, you have not mentored them as a father, so what are they representing out here? What are they representing up here? So when the drugs come, they'll go that direction. When somebody comes to introduce something to them, they'll go that direction, which is, which is not supposed to be so from the beginning. Hallelujah. So, uh, so let us fear, young people, let us fear God. So Jeremiah chapter uh, 23, Jeremiah chapter 20, let me read for us the scriptures, uh, 23, 23 and 4. 20, Jeremiah 23. 23 and 24 the bible says uh, i am god near at heart am i a god near at heart says the lord hallelujah and not a god uh far off i'm a god i the bible says um, um <laughs> am i a god near at heart says the lord and not a god far off now i want you to see this verse 24 can anyone hide himself in the sacred places so I shall not see him. Are you seeing this? Do, do I not feel heaven and earth, says the Lord. Hallelujah. So these scriptures are showing us that God is not very far and not very near. So, uh, and there's nowhere you can hide. There's no way. One time, a story is told, and we know it is in the public domain when we're in school, you know. So a story is told of uh, two boys that were given eggs by their parents and they were told uh, to go somewhere that nobody is able to see them and break the eggs so uh, one went and looked and looked so under the bed and he saw nobody is seeing me so he broke the uh, he broke uh, the egg but the other second boy went loud the mountains everywhere and everywhere he went he could see the eye of God and he went back with the egg and he said I, there is nowhere God is not seeing me now I want the young people to know whether you are you are you have joined illuminati or whichever society you have joined whether i have given you the links or whether you have gone through demonic rituals so that you can become you can become famous whether you are fornicating and your parents do not know you are taking bangi and all those things and whatever you are taking the 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 uh, the, 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 the the whatever the kind of a lifestyle you are, you are doing you know, and, and uh, your parents took you to school and whatever you know let me tell you your sins will find you out there is nowhere you can hide that God is not seeing you. And it's just a matter of time. Your sins will find you out. Your sins will find you out. 
Hallelujah. So God is not very far and very near. So uh, Jeremiah, I mean Isaiah chapter 46. Isaiah chapter 46. Let me read for you the scriptures. Isaiah chapter 46 and um, verse 13. Isaiah 46 and verse 13. Isaiah 46 and verse 13. So the Bible says, I bring my righteousness near. This is God. I bring my righteousness near. I shall not, I, the Bible says, I bring my righteousness near, and it shall not be far, uh, it shall not be far off. My salvation shall not linger, and I will pray salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. Are you seeing this? So that, that means the righteousness of God is accessible to all of us. Anybody willing, you can access the righteousness of God because I bring my righteousness near hallelujah it shall not be far off the salvation of god shall not linger hallelujah and i will pray salvation in Zion. so for our sake and the, the 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 generations of our children the righteousness of god is reachable the salvation of god is accessible hallelujah so when we when restore back the sanity you know that we are supposed to have as children of god even in our own houses let me tell you it will work better for us even for the generations of our children in the name of jesus act chapter 17 act chapter 17 act chapter 17 and verse 27 act chapter 17 and verse 27 Hallelujah. I'm using a hard copy of a Bible. This is what I've requested the church to get. Uh, these things, they are going to distort these and uh, to mess up with them, to corrupt uh, this church. I mean, this, uh, their software. So, kindly make sure you have as many hard copy of Bible, different, different versions. It, it is for your good. So, uh, Acts chapter 17 and verse 27. Acts chapter 17 and verse 27, the Bible says, So that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope uh, for him and fight him, though he is not far from each one of us. Are you seeing this? So, that's the portion I want the young people to know. God is not very far from us. Now, I want to give you a very own story from my own mother's house of my, young, my younger brother. My younger brother, who is my friend. One time, my, my younger brother, after we were brought up in the ways of the Lord. Now, today he's born again and he's a father who is married and a father of these children. So he decided, I'm talking to young people out there. So he decided to go uh, to, to go away wild way and drink and all those things. So one time, uh, the kingdom of darkness stole him, literally. And uh, my, the, my parents, you know, I was not allowed. They, so they called for prayers. They went every morning. They looked for him. They, they advertised and they, they could not get him. So um, the story is just to cut it short because of time. Is one now when my brother, after you know, being taken through whatever he was taken through, uh, whatever the devil took him, you know, because he was in the hands of the wicked. So that's the devil. That's the devil who stole the destiny. So one time, you know, because my mother kept praying, my mother was very prayerful. One time, uh, in the car where my brother was parked in the car where my brother was parked he, he he looked and you know he he he, he the spirit of god helped him to come back to his senses and he just made a prayer if you hear him say today you will really laugh and he told god he he, he did not call his own god he said god of my mother <laughs> God of my mother, if you rescue me from here, I will love you and I will serve you. I will live for you. He called the God of his mother. And let me tell you, you know, God restored him back for it. The God of his mother restored him back for it. I I'm talking about a true story. So the God of his mother restored him free. And he was able now to get out of that car, get some money that was in a dashboard, you know, and, and open the door and run away. And uh, thank God that he was able even to lead, open his, God opened his eyes, was able to lead and know where he was. And he was able now to reconnect with the family for the glory and honor of the name of the Lord. I don't know how we would be as a family today if we lost our brother hallelujah so what am i saying young people out there we are praying for you don't despise the prayers don't just don't don't just lie out it will not go well with you you need us as your parents you need us as you there's not you know you are we, you are living as if we have never lived we are here or not that we are here with you and we know we are your parents and we know we know and we are praying for you hallelujah so let the young people not not go for quick fixes quick fixes 
you know, somebody is showing you I'm at the airport with the bags and I don't know what they are doing and that is not what they live. Somebody is showing you, you know, I have married this man, I don't know what. Some of these people are just, be, they have just been given assignment by the devil. So somebody has married so and so. It's just a show off. That is under, you see some of these even men are now giving birth to children. Have you ever seen a man give, they even have a small baby. Have you ever seen a man giving birth to another baby? So they are living a lie to, 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 to manipulate so many destinies and they are being used of the devil because they are agents of the devil to, to, to steal so many destinies of the young people. And now you can see they are living a posh life and now you go and now hook yourself up with another man and you are a man, a young man and another, another girl who hook up with another girl. That is wickedness. And that's why you realize some of you out there who you are going to who, uh, the, uh, know where this video is going to be watched, you know even after you have done all those things, nothing is changing in your life. The money you have seen people make there, you are not making it because it's a lie of the devil. It's a lie of the devil. The kind of life you have seen other people say they are, they are living and they are, you know, the high life. You are not living it. Even if you are now a gay or a lesbian, you are not living it. You are not living it. And you are wondering now, why, why am I not getting the money these people are getting? And because there's no fulfillment in wickedness. It's just a lie. You take the drugs, you drink and lie out and fornicate and all that. At the end of the day, there's no fulfillment in you. It's just a waste of time. Hallelujah. So Proverbs, I mean a Psalm 139. Psalm 139 and verse 14. Psalm 139 and verse 14. Let's go there. Psalm 139 and verse 14. Psalm 139 and verse 14. So the Bible says, I will praise uh I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. And that my and that my soul knows very well. So my constitution is this I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I am free. Let me tell you, my sisters and my, my, my daughters and my sons out there, you are a fearfully and wonderfully made. When God gave a son to your, to your mother and your father, and they're not a girl, you cannot change yourself now to become a girl. You are born a son. Remain a son. You are a fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't try to change yourself to what God did not make you. It will have no fulfillment. And I hear the Spirit of God say there's a lot of void in so many of these young people's, you know, people's lives because whatever they are looking for, they are not getting it. Then they are looking at it in the long places. So you cannot get it. Hallelujah. So you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, so the Bible says in the book of James, um, James chapter, um, Isaiah 46 and verse 12. Let's just read the Isaiah, for, uh, then I leave that side. Isaiah 46 and verse 12. Isaiah 46 and verse 12. Isaiah 46 and verse 12. So the Bible says, listen to me, uh, listen to me, you stubborn hearted who are far from righteousness. Hallelujah. So when you are far from righteousness, the Bible is calling you stubborn hearted. Kindly young people, stop being stubborn hearted. Stop being, uh, stop being stubborn hearted. Humble yourselves. I know we are in early times where children are not obeying their parents, but you, as you hear this word and wherever this word will go, parents can they share this word to your children. Hallelujah. Stop being, you know, it does not reward anything. It does not pay. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. James chapter, James chapter 4, James chapter 4, James is in the New Testament. So James chapter 4 and verse 8, James chapter 4 and verse 8, James chapter 4 and verse 8. Before you get to Peter, there is a book called James there and verse 8. James chapter 4 and verse 8. So the Bible says, the Bible says, um, the Bible says, uh, let me read from verse 7. James chapter 4 from verse 7. Therefore submit to God. This is a call for all of us, whichever age. Therefore submit to God, lest it's the devil, and he will free from you. So when you tell me you are tempted here and there, it's because you went to the kingdom of the devil. If you free, I mean, if you, the Bible says, if you resist him, he will free. Hallelujah. This is what we are seeing with the Joseph and any other person. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Hallelujah. So this is an operation you do. Cleanse your hands, purify yourself. This is an operation you do for yourself in the case you have fallen short of the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So the other one is uh, First John. First John just ahead there. First John chapter 4. I mean, First John, chapter four. First John, chapter four, 
1 to 6. Hallelujah. Beloved, the Bible says, uh, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test every spirit, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. But this you know, the spirit of God, every spirit. Now, and now my constitution is that the first portion of that scripture, test every spirit. Hallelujah. So when somebody is coming to introduce you, I don't know, this is how we live, this is how we make it, you have the provision. Because he knew there is a seed of God, because this is the one who created you. So test every spirit. Hallelujah. So um, now, uh, how can a young man live a pure life? Psalm 119 and verse 9. We know the scripture. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Uh, Psalm 119 and verse 9. Quick read Psalm 119 and verse 9. So the Bible says, Psalm 119 and verse 9. So the Bible says, Psalm 119 and verse 9. So the Bible says, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking it according to your word. So by taking it, not the counsel of men, by taking it according to the word of God. So we must be teachable. When our parents call us to teach us or to train us the word of God, we must take heed of that word because that is the only way we can cleanse our way. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13 is showing us the conclusion of the matter. After you have done everything, so we are supposed to feel Fear God and obey His commandments. Fear God and obey His commandments. Hallelujah. I want the young people to know bad company will spoil good morals. Proverbs chapter 1, 8 and 19. You can read all of it. Bad company. 1 Corinthians 15, that 3 and that 4. Bad company. Bad company. You have a good destiny and a great destiny, but the bad company will always spoil your good morals. Now, in Psalm chapter 1, uh, the psalmist is showing us the people we should sit down with, walk with, and even, uh, uh, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and um, you know, start with, walk with, and sit with. You know, Psalms chapter 1, you can read uh, the scriptures for yourself. So, whatever we do for us to be able to prosper, whether it is school you have been taken and in your personal life, kindly, you should be very careful about your company. The people you sit with, the people you walk with, and the people you start with the word of God is very clear in the book of Psalm chapter 1 so uh, uh, so what is the conclusion of the matter I want to finish it there so what is the conclusion of this matter for us in this particular broadcast so what is the conclusion number one as a young person be yourself know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made so be yourself Joseph in Egypt be yourself Daniel in Babylon be yourself hallelujah so set your own personal rules and regulations in your own personal lives and they they must be delivered from a I mean, uh, they, they must be gotten, you know, from what you have been taught or trained by your own parents. Number two, no, no, be yourself. Number two, know yourself. Be yourself. Number two, know yourself. Number three, remain as you. Remain as you. So number one, be yourself. Number two, as a young person, know yourself. Number three, remain as you. Number four, work on the you to better your tomorrow. Work on the you to better your tomorrow. Hallelujah. Number the other number number five. Allow the process to take its course. Allow the process to take its course. Hallelujah. The other number number six. Uh, number six. Allow and you. I mean, uh, agree with the time or, or agree with the time. You know your undertakings. Agree with the time. So if God has not gotten into a place of getting a car, as a young person, live like that for now. It is not forever. So agree with the time or allow, allow the process to take its time and to take its course. And the process comes with the time. So if God has brought you into this level today, live in that level. Don't, don't have the rest, of the, the, the rest of the flesh and the pride of life. Don't learn for other things. Don't learn for other things. And I want to make a warning. The social media platforms are good. The TikToks and all those things are good. But let me tell you, in everything, there's a spirit behind it. So if you're not in the spirit, even in Babylon, there was a spirit in Babylon. Egypt, there were spirits. So, so for you to be able to start like Joseph as a young person in that, in that area where there's a spirit of uh, in Potiphar's house, where the spirit of immorality is operating. So how do you, you must, how do you live there? You must know I am Joseph here. I must be myself and I must remain as myself. Other young people may have slept with this woman, but me I will not. So you make a decision. Hallelujah. And allow allow uh, with the time you know all things to be manifested and perfected according to the destiny that god preordained for you in the name of jesus hallelujah my god hallelujah so i want to leave it there may the lord help us may the lord help us and i'm talking to parents and i'm talking to the ministers of the gospel let us not assume that uh, the internet is going to, to to shape up children for us it cannot the tvs and all of they cannot they cannot so we must take back 
our children back to the roots. You know, we must go back to the stone where we are we were went. We must go back there and give them the standard of our kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you so much. We we'll see you another time with another episode. Kaidre share this word to every youth meeting, every youth platform, everywhere. Let the youth, let the people, let the youth and the young people be cancelled. I'm a mother. So I'm, I'm not just talking as a prophet today. I'm also, to, I, I'm still a prophet, but I'm talking as a mother also. So that um, we avoid this premature death. These young people are covenanting themselves to so many things. You know, and, uh, you know, the devil is stealing destinies. And we can escape from this if we agree to be trained in the way of the Lord as young people. God bless you.